Heavenly Father, we just come to you and thank you for this day. We thank you for the sunshine we had today. We thank you for the chance to gather tonight to be in this building. Uh, we thank you for uh, the game we're going to play um, and some competition, wonderful, friendly competition between each other. Uh, so thank you for uh, even silly things like, like the Grinch who stole Christmas. And God, the point that it makes clear to us, um, Father God, that, that we, we just have to treat everybody respectfully. We have to treat everybody just like Jesus would want us to treat them. So, God, as we open your word tonight, I pray, Holy Spirit, you fall in this place, first off, um, that you would fill each one of us. I pray that your message is delivered here tonight. Um, and, God, I just pray that you would open our minds so that we can truly understand your word tonight, um, and that it makes sense to us. God, I pray that you open our hearts to receive the message that you have for each one of us, God, that it would get in, that it would change from the inside out, that it would draw us closer to you, uh, make us a better person, Make us a better Christian, make us a better uh, son or daughter or husband, father, uh, whatever we might be. God, kind of make, make us better because that's exactly what your word does. It's alive, it's active, uh, and it's the business of changing lives. So that's what we pray for tonight. We pray for lives to be changed. God, if there's anyone here tonight who does not know you as their Lord and their Savior, I pray tonight is the night. Uh, be working as only you can. We give this, this time to you. Use it for your kingdom. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Right, so tonight we're going to look at the Grinch, right? The Grinch was a difficult person. If you ever watched the show, right, or you ever read the book as a kid, right, the Grinch was called the Grinch because he was just mean, right? Um, he was he was an outcast because he didn't have holiday cheer, okay? Um, he didn't like Christmas, he didn't like people, but the reason he didn't like people is because people didn't like him. People treated him wrong from the time he was a little boy. Right? Nobody accepted them into their group. And so he learned just to be out on his own, all by himself, for his entire life. And he grew to have hatred because that's all anybody had ever shown him. Nobody showed him kindness or compassion or love. They treated him with disrespect. And so that's how the Grinch became who he was. And all it took, all it took was one little young girl who got the message right, who got the whole point. You know what? He may be different. He may have different skin color or hair color and fur color in this case. You know, he may live on a mountain or we live down here. He may talk different than us, may act different than us, but you know what? It does not give me a right not to love him. And that's why, that's what God is saying to you and God is saying to me tonight. Right? The reason that Jesus Christ came 2,000 years ago was to show us that every single person on the face of this earth is, is God's creation. Right? It doesn't matter what country you're born in. It doesn't matter what family you're from. It doesn't matter how much money you have or what color skin you have or what color hair or eyes that you have, whether you're tall or short. It doesn't matter. We are all God's creation. We are all part of God's loving family, we need to love each other and accept each other and treat each other the right way. Whether we know them or we don't, whether we get along with them or we don't, we need to do our part. All right, one of my favorite verses, um, Paul writes, hey, as long as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. As long as it depends on you, so that means you and I have to do our part to make sure that the people around us know that we love and we respect them. We treat them the right way. We don't go looking to cause division or to cause fights or to get in the way of people doing anything, right? They would distract them from God. That's not what we're here. We are called to live at peace with everyone as long as it depends on us. Now, sometimes you can't help what other people do. You really can't. But you can still treat them the right way. That's what Jesus came to tell us. That's what he came to model before us. Right? So we're going to look at how do we love people that we don't get along with. Right? How do we truly love them? Not just forever to be in the same room with them. How do we truly love people that we don't like, that don't like us, that treat us the wrong way? How do we love them? Right? Right? There's, there's only really one answer for that, and that's Jesus. And that's what we're going to look at real quick tonight. All right? My clicker will work. There we go. All right? Jesus.
Jesus, his name literally means, it's on your paper, it literally means the Lord saves. That's why he came to this earth. That's why he was given the name he was given, Jesus. It means the Lord saves. Right? God sent him here because he knew you and I just could not do it. Right? Even keeping the Old Testament law, keeping all those rituals, doing the sacrifices, God knew that we were never going to measure up to his standards. <coughs> so he had his Jesus to provide the sacrifice that you and I so desperately needed. Right? The Lord saves. It comes from Jesus, right? He's also given the name Emmanuel. God is with us. Right? God coming down in the form of a human being man. Emmanuel. Such a beautiful name. I hope you catch rid of the meaning of that. God himself coming in human form to be with us. Right? Absolutely beautiful. That's what, that's what it means. Right? Uh, Alright. So, how do you and I show compassion, show love, respect to someone who doesn't deserve it? To someone who doesn't deserve it. Alright? That kid in your neighborhood or in your class. That man, you just don't get along. You never have. You don't get along. To that teacher, trust me, I was in high school today, all right, and I talked to a whole lot of people today, and they don't like their teachers. But you know what? That does not mean that you have the right to disrespect them, all right? If you don't like them and they don't like you, God still says, hey, you know what? You still respect them. You still follow the directions they give you, unless it contradicts the word of God itself. You are to follow their instructions. And you are to treat them with respect. That goes for your teachers. That goes for your administrators. That goes for your parents. That goes for any adult in your life. Those are Jesus' commands to you and to me. Right? That's how you turn the world upside down. Somebody that you don't get along with, when you love them with the love of Jesus, you rock their world. You change them. And eventually they're going to come to you and go, man, you know, I know I'm your teacher. I know I'm a supervisor in your school or whatever it is, but you know what? I need to be more like you. Because there's something about you that's different. There's something about you that just gets it. And I need that. How cool would it be to lead one of your teachers? Or maybe it's an adult in your family or a sibling in your family. Lead them to Jesus Christ because they see the difference that God's making in your life. That's what it's about. Jesus came to make change. Right? Jesus didn't come to rock the boat. Jesus came to sink it. Because this boat's going the wrong direction. We're going to sink it. We're going to build a new one. We're going to go a completely different direction. We're going to go God's way. All right? How do we show compassion to someone who doesn't deserve it? I love that little picture. It's so cute. Right? All right. So in the movie that we, part of the movie that we just watched, Cindy Lou, the little girl, all right, she nominates the Grinch because the Grinch is the one person who needs the message of Christmas, the spirit of Christmas more than anyone else. Everyone else seems to get it. They get all excited about this time of year. They get all excited about celebrating Christmas, but the Grinch hates it. So you know, he's the one person who needs it, right? My question to you, though, later on, we get small groups. We start thinking about it now if you want, right? My question to you later on is going to be, who is the one person in your life that really needs to hear about Jesus Christ? The one person that you can't get along with, and the only way that you're going to ever be reconciled is if both of you, have Jesus. There are people like that in your life. Right? We're going to be talking about that later, right? Cindy Lou nominates the Grinch, right? And here's the first thing in your notes, the first blank gem, right? She realized people are difficult because they need Jesus. They've got to have Jesus. If they don't have Jesus, how in the world are they ever going to know what true love really is? They're not. Right? The problem is that nobody's ever told them. The Bible's pretty clear. You and I are given that command by God to go and tell the whole world. Not just our little inner group of circle of friends that we have that come to church anyway. Right? We're not called to tell those people about Jesus. We're called to tell everybody about Jesus. And that includes people that we don't get along with. Right? People are difficult because they need Jesus. And nobody is bothered to tell them to share that good news with them. So, 
how can we expect them to act in a civil, respectful manner when they don't know what, who Jesus is and they don't know what true love really is? It's not going to happen. It's up to me and to you to tell people about it. All right? Who are the people in your life that are rejected because they're different? Who are those people that walk the hallways in school by themselves because nobody else will talk to them? Because they're a little different than everyone else. All right? I was one of those kids in high school. Everybody knew me, but they knew I was different. They knew I was a Christian and I was outspoken about it. And so I was an outcast for a lot of different things. Because I wasn't willing to compromise on my faith and my beliefs and my morals like everybody else was. But you know what? They respected me for it. And to me, that was all that really mattered. They respected me for it. But there are people around you, maybe you are that person who feels rejected just because you're a little different. But there are people in your school, in your neighborhood, in your family, who feel rejected every single day, just like the Grinch. Because they're a little different. But you know what? They're still God's creation. They're still one of his people. And he loves them very much. And you and I have to as well. Right? So how, this is where I want you to think of yourself. How do I treat these difficult people? These people who seem to make every day of my life miserable. How do I treat them? Do I treat them the same way they treat me? Or do I rise above that? Right? You should rise above that. The reason why our world is in such bad shape is that because difficult people <laughs> make difficult situations. And the Christians don't rise above the cream of the crop. The Christians sink right down to it. And we treat each other horribly the same way. And we've got to stop that. We've got to point the world to Jesus. We've got to display Jesus to them by the way that we act. By the way that we talk. You got something, Sean? There you go. It's a great way to start. Right? The problem is that we don't even want to go that route. We don't want to start. Man, I can't stand that person. I don't want to get to know that person. I don't care anything about that person. If that person rots in hell, that's fine with me. All right? And unfortunately, that's how a lot of Christians feel. We've got to stop that. Because that's why Jesus came. To seek and to save that which was lost. The people out there who don't know Jesus, who don't know God, don't have a relationship with him, that's why he came. That's why he came to this earth, is so we could have that relationship with him. And then right before he left, he commanded you and me to go and tell every single person is worthy of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Every single person is welcomed into the family of God no matter what they've done or who they are or where they've come from. Right? My question to you is, think about that person that you can't stand. Maybe it's one person, maybe it's two or three or four, that one person that you just don't get along with. Right? Think about that person. Put, put yourself in their shoes. Right? Put yourself in their shoes. If you were them and they were you and they knew all about Jesus Christ and you didn't, and they didn't bother to tell you. I don't know about you, I'd be pretty ticked off. Standing before Jesus one day, and Jesus is going to go, well, you know, I had so and so and so and so and so and so. All these people in your life who were supposed to tell you about, about me, who were supposed to tell you about how to have a relationship with God, but they chose to keep their mouth closed. And they chose to hold a grudge against you. And therefore, now you must spend eternity in hell. Because the people of God chose to keep Jesus to themselves. You know how much it has to break the heart of God? When we keep our mouth shut about the greatest thing ever, oh sure, we'll spread gossip like that. Or we'll show some cool highlight uh, on a YouTube or whatever, on Snapchat. We'll show it like that. We won't tell people about Jesus. What's wrong with that? A lot wrong with that. All right? What did Jesus do for us? In Matthew 9, 35 to 37. All right, we're not going to really get into that tonight. All right. Matthew, Matthew chapter 9. It says right there. It starts with compassion. All right? 
Jesus had compassion for people. It talks all throughout the Gospels where Jesus would be walking, be traveling from village to village or city to city, or wherever he was going, he would be traveling. He would see people, and it says, and he had compassion on them. His heart was broken for the things in their lives that didn't honor or please God. His heart was broken for the sickness, the disease that they had in their life. He had compassion on them, and it moved him to go and meet that need. He had compassion. That's where it starts. If you don't have compassion for people, you need to check yourself and see if you really do have a relationship with God. Because if you have a relationship with God, you're going to be moved to help other people. All right? You're going to have a desire to try and do something to help someone on a regular basis. Not just at Christmas time, but on a regular basis. Right? If, you look, look at, if you can look at somebody who's literally um, you know, homeless or down on their luck completely, they go, well, it sucks for you. What do you think Jesus would do if he came up upon somebody suffering? He would run to that person, wrap his arms around that person, and say, what can the Son of God do for you? He would get to know that person. He would spend time with that person. We're going to look at a couple of, in Luke chapter 19, right? Luke chapter 19. All right, we'll see another story where Jesus is walking along. Imagine that. He's walking along and he sees a person. Hey, you know what? That person is an outcast. But you know what? Today that person is going to know God as his heavenly father. And Jesus goes and he, he, he takes this person and they go back to their home. A sinner, an outcast, people, someone hated by the church people. And Jesus goes to their home and sits down at their table, has a meal with them. And all the church people are standing outside going, don't they know who he's talking to? Don't they know what kind of a sinner that is? Don't they know how mean that person is? Don't they know what the gossip they spread and all this junk? Come up with excuses I'm not to be part of this person's life. And Jesus knows it all. He goes, you know what? I came here just for you. I didn't come here to heal those who aren't sick. Jesus said, I came to heal the sick. So that those who are lost will find their way home to God. That's why Jesus came to this earth 2,000 years ago. That's why we celebrate Christmas. Not just for presents and lights and things like that. Alright. How did Jesus treat those people who are helpless, who are rejected, sinners like you and like me? How did he treat us? He helped them. He found a way to meet a physical need. Or an emotional need, or whatever it might be, so he could meet the ultimate spiritual need. That's why Jesus came to provide a relationship with God Almighty for all of eternity. Right? You and I need to do a better job about reaching out to people who are rejected, who are helpless, who don't know God as their Father, their Heavenly Father. Right? You and I have to do a better job reaching out to them. Matthew 9, we see another story where Jesus is walking along and he says, Hey, Matthew, you know that that tax collector booth. Come along with me. Be one of my disciples. So not only did he pull out the tax collector, but the tax collector was absolutely hated by every single person in the city. Right? They always took more money than what they should have. Right? But worst of all, they were their own people. Right? These were all Jews. And it would have been a Jew robbing another Jew. And you didn't do that in Bible times. If you wanted to rob a Samaritan, that was okay by their standards. But you didn't rob another Jew. And that's what the tax collectors did. They took more money than what they should have. And so people hated tax collectors. And when Jesus said, Matthew, come, not just come and let's go have dinner together. Jesus said, Matthew, let's go. You're going to follow me. Be with me every single moment of every single day from here on out. And again, all the church people go, oh, how could he do that? All the church people go, can you believe what he just said, what he just did? I don't think so. Right? That's exactly what they did. They started talking. Doesn't he know what kind of person that is? Doesn't Jesus know that man is a sinner? And Jesus is going, he's a sinner, just like he's a sinner, just like she's a sinner, just like she is, and just like he is, and just like everybody else is. 
All right? Every person on the face of the earth except for Jesus is a sinner. We've all done something. We've messed up. And the churchy people back in Bible times, those religious leaders, they couldn't get past the fact that Jesus wanted to associate himself with the lowest of the low. Again, Jesus says, I didn't come to be a doctor to those who are already okay. I came to heal the sick, to be a way for the lost to find their way home. Man, my key up this was a whole lot faster than the PowerPoint was really, really slow. All right? Here's the next blank for you. Jesus had compassion on these difficult people. He wanted to, he wanted to hang out with them. Can I say you should underline that in your notes? He wanted to hang out with them. So he could show them the love they desperately needed. He wanted to be around them because he knew how much they needed God. John 3.16, almost anybody who's been raised in church knows that verse. John 3.16, right? For God to love the world, what? He gave his only son, whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Right? But most people have stopped there. They don't know verse 17. Right? My challenge to each one of you guys over the next week, all right? I want you to memorize John 3.17. Okay? Memorize it. It's really not hard. It's really short. It's really easy. But it really explains the whole message of Jesus Christ himself. The message of Christmas is explained in those two verses right there. I want you to memorize it. Right? You memorize it next week you come back? Well, I, I ordered some really cool prizes this week. And I hope they come in by next week. If they do, right? if you can memorize those two verses, come in to me next week and tell me in word for word, beginning to end. Right? I'll give you one of those prizes. All right? Don't be surprised when you get here. When, when they, hopefully they get here by Wednesday. All right? We'll see. All right? I'll give you one if you memorize those two verses. Can I write on the hand? Nope. Silence. 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 It's right here. It's right here. It's right here. All right? It's number seven on your piece of paper. All right? Guys, here's the whole thing. Here's the key. Here's how we wrap this up. All right? Here's how we summarize the whole message of Christmas and why Jesus came to earth. All right? Because the world doesn't need another critic. They don't need somebody else pointing fingers going, how dare you? They don't need another person finding everything wrong with everyone else. Try and pull the, 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 the spotlight off of themselves. And try to put it on somebody else. That's not what the world needs. The world does not need a critic. It needs people of compassion. But people of compassion, just like Jesus, are willing to act on that. All right? And here's, my, here's, my, here's the thing I want to say. The last part of that. They're willing to act on their convictions and then to make a difference. Does it say in everybody's life? No. To make a difference in someone's life. Right? If every single one of us in this room, and this is a big group of people, if every single one of us in this room went out and we found one person this week who doesn't know Jesus, and we shared Jesus with them, and we brought them back with us next week, all right? This room wouldn't be big enough to hold us. It's barely big enough to hold us now as it is. So we have to go to a, a different room just because of that. And that's just if every person in you went out and got one person. Right? Now imagine if we did that, if next week we came back here and we doubled the size. Right? And then I said the same thing next week. Hey, everybody in here go out and get one person and bring them back. In two weeks, right, we have to go to the sanctuary because that would be the only room big enough to hold us. In three weeks, we have to go to the school gym because we couldn't fit even in the sanctuary. All right? You grow quickly, but it starts with one person. All right? One person. All right? Everybody here goes, man, there's 8 billion people in this world. How are we supposed to reach them all? You're not. You reach one at a time. One at a time. All right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to break off into our small groups. 